So we're on. We're on. Excellent. We're on. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Uh, it's nice to be back here to do another live stream um, on the subject of learning love and maybe some other subjects around that. Um, welcome. Nice to have you here, whoever's, whoever's joining us. And good to be back here with you, Sally. Yeah, great to be back, Adrian. Oh, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, it has, yeah. yeah. <laughs> back in the hot seat. Yes. <laughs> so I'm told that the technology takes a, little, a few seconds, a little while to connect and for uh, Facebook to catch up. Um, so I thought we could, um, we could just start with a couple of conscious breaths just to bring us into the moment and to let the worries, anxieties, plans for yesterday and tomorrow seep away. So if you just want to make yourselves comfortable and take a deep breath, really feeling everything in your body. So notice the breath coming in, notice your chest rising, expanding. And then as you let the air out, feel it Feel the temperature of the air as it passes your top lip, coming from the nostrils. Feel the movement in the body. And as you breathe in again, just see how does your body feel as you take a couple of moments to come inside. Facebook now will have caught up with us. <laughs> Good morning, Margaret. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Margaret. So um, I thought, yeah, I talk a little bit today about I work with a group here called the Alpahara Brothers. We're inspired by a group in the UK called the Band of Brothers, um, and they work to support young men who are in in the uk to support young men who are in the in probation on probation or have been in care or in prison the most vulnerable young men and we our group here uh we're separate entity so we are starting to create our own material for doing uh, rites of passage and mentoring young men in our community and as I started to look at the material with some of the elders that are supporting us from that tradition in the UK, um, I noticed the overlaps with yeah. the learning love work. Um, and within that, within the men's group, we work with the four archetypes, the lover, the warrior, the magician, and the sovereign, the king. And um, so I'm starting to see uh, overlaps with the, the, the use of archetypes is, is handy because um, archetypes describe and help us have an understanding mm -hmm. for deep unconscious energies that are universal within the human yeah. species. So, how, how would you describe an archetype for somebody who's never heard of that term before? Mm, okay, so an archetype in, used in this sense is a, an archetypal energy and it's a part of you and I. So say if we took the, the warrior archetype, um, in the way we use him, he sits in the south. Each of our, we use four archetypes and they have a direction, north, south, east, west. He has a gateway emotion. In case of the warrior, the gateway emotion is anger. And we need that energy in our lives to, mm -hmm. the warrior is sent out to, to do a quest to get something built, mm -hmm. to get a, a dream of a company up and running, to set boundaries. Uh, it's the energy, it's our life force. Yeah. So whilst anger is often seen in a negative spin, in especially in modern lifestyle, the truth is we need a healthy connection yeah. to our anger. Okay. We need that energy to make things happen. So the warrior is part of my makeup. And it's the part, part of the makeup of all of us, of, of, of women and men. Mm -hmm. We have that energy potentially inside us somewhere. Um, then the magician, he works with grief. He comes through grief. Okay. So he doesn't 
He comes through fear. Okay. And through fear, we have the need to assess the situation, to get the facts of the matter, to look around us and mm -hmm. see and make plans. How do we move forward safely? Okay. Um, the lover comes through grief, and that's our need to connect. Um, and the sovereign, the king or the queen in us, is the warm, overseeing character, the one that can listen to all the members of the community but have an oversight, a healthy oversight, and has a need or a wish to be healing and generous yeah. to the community, and very much to hold order and keep chaos at bay. Mm -hmm. So it's a little outline. There are actually thousands of archetypes. Okay. We're working with four at the moment. Um, but a, some of our, so when we, when we work together, we use those four archetypes as a way of checking in. Well, how am I out of balance? Each of the archetypes has shadow sides, too much energy in that area mm -hmm. or too little. So too much anger or too much grief or too yeah. much... Yeah, so with, with yeah. anger, with the warrior, mm -hmm. uh, if there's too much anger in us, we become a punisher. And if there's too little, we become a walkover. We could just push, mm -hmm. push yeah. over. We don't know how to set boundaries. We don't know how to say, that's enough, thank yeah. you, no more. Um, and yeah, too much, and we, well, we've all seen too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and so with the lover, for instance, the, the too, too much energy in the lover brings addiction. That like, I can't get enough. More, okay. more drugs, more Me sex, more, more yeah. relationships, more contact, more, yeah, input. We're desperately trying to feed a, fill a void that's not there. Um, and too little energy in the lover, we become robotic. Mm -hmm. So in our, in our supposedly intimate relationships, we become very stiff. Yeah. And there's a lack of connection. Yeah, there's detached. a lack of opening, lack of vulnerability. Um, yeah. So that gives you a kind of an idea mm -hmm. energetically what these um, archetypes are a framework for, for us to see. Generally, we don't see when we're in the healthy part of an arch mm -hmm. archetype. It just yeah. runs. It's good. But we, we can see when we're out of balance because the shadows come into play. Yeah. So with the magician, an over, over energy in the magician uh, makes us manipulative. Mm -hmm. So if, if last week I think, well, I wasn't really, really straight and honest. I, you know, I've been um, hanging out with certain people because I want help from them, but I haven't been telling them straight, yeah. will you help me? Okay. I yeah. might say, okay, there's a little bit, of, a little bit too much energy yeah. going on in the... In the in the magician and by observing similar to with with the learning love work observing ourselves and where we're triggered out of balance the more we observe the more we get a feeling yeah. for understanding ourselves and the easier it is to not live in reaction mm -hmm. so with the like the journey from essence from when you're you're mm -hmm. born yeah. These archetypes come into play yeah. throughout your life, and they're used within learning love to help you know yeah. yourself. Well, we don't know. We don't use the archetypes within learning, learning love. That's okay, very sorry. much to do with my men's group. <laughs> okay, sorry. but I now I'm putting material together with for an initiation rites of passage okay. weekend, which mm -hmm. we will offer to young men in the community. I started to see how the how the two. Um, how the two models work and from a learning love perspective we're born in our essence and the essence is there all all the way through our life it's there it's just that when we're born we don't we we're not blocked we're not already mm -hmm. covering up we're not in protection yeah, we're, we're just flowing open. through yeah. yeah so so the essence of a of a baby is that is there and then as they grow and they or as we take on difficulties through life, we get knocked around by by abandonment, by engulfment, mm -hmm. by being told what to do, by being unwelcome, all the things we've talked about before. The essence gets buried under the um, enormity of the strong feelings yeah. that come up and then our protection that learns how to not feel those. So by the time we become a young adult, we have now buried our our true energy, our cr full creative uh, energy and our ability to be clearly intimate and, and at one with all that's around us, 
that's buried by then mm -hmm. under the difficult feelings of growing up and the protection all the things we've learned to yes, do the roles yeah. we play mm -hmm. so now this is where the work with the brothers comes in because we do a lot of work to notice in ourselves where where you're saying when you you know when you ask somebody how's it going they say yeah i'm fine and it's kind of like we yeah. don't know whether they're fine or not that's yeah. what we say it's a front yes. it's the false self and the false self can come over in in bravado in compensated shame we would call mm -hmm. that in learning love where yeah oh yeah i'm great I'm, 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 just when actually inside you're yeah. you're not feeling so good so and you that's quite common it. isn't it very common <laughs> not as common since trump left because it was very <laughs> common when, every time he got up to speak um and then there's all the other protection mechanisms drinking taking drugs working lots um hiding in social media television not mm -hmm. not engaging these are all ways of yeah. of of protecting ourselves from the difficult feelings that come up either just sitting quietly or in relating with somebody and then we can begin the conscious work if mm -hmm. we choose to of of stepping back well first of all observing the the, the unconscious protection patterns the reaction to life and then we can choose to step back mm -hmm. into the feelings that, that are underneath that and work with those to, to bring us towards our essence. And I see now, I'm see i seeing now a journey where the essence is kind of unconscious as a baby. We're born, we're just there. Mm -hmm. We go through the trauma of childhood, inevitably, and we end up as young adults protected. And we're living in protection which is in many ways that's fine, but some of those protection mechanisms don't serve us and get in the way of intimacy, get in the way of our creativity. Also the unexamined backlog of feelings that we didn't feel as a child, they take up an awful lot of yeah. energy to hold in place. So working through that brings us eventually to the sovereign, the, the archetype of the king or the queen, which is this overseeing warm inclusive mm -hmm. energy and when we come back back to the essence in this state we we're there consciously because we've been through this and yeah, we've had to yeah. we've we're kind of born into our essence we're unconscious of it there we just are it then we lose it under a pile of trauma and yeah. feelings and, and conditioning and, and teaching yeah. and life <laughs> yeah and then we bury that under mm -hmm the protection mechanisms we find, um, withdrawal, uh, continually moving to another city when it gets awkward, uh, changing relationships, drinking, whatever we do to not feel, bury it under that. So the work with the Learning Love Institute and also with the brothers, with the brothers it's, it's about um, offering support for young adults to start that journey and, and mm -hmm. we can support them in starting to observe yeah. where their protection is. Yeah. What In what way do they show the false self, which says, I'm yeah. fine, I'm all right. Or... And especially for men, because... Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. you know, as I'm, you know, as, as a woman, it's not the same for me, but for men, yeah. you're sort of supposedly taught to be, I'm okay, I'm mm -hmm. strong, you've got the front, you've got no... You don't show your feelings you yeah. keep going so yeah. i'm guessing like a lot of men are pretty cut off or very shut well protected down. very well protected that's yeah. the word yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um our, it's easy to to arrive as a young adult feeling um that it, our grief is not welcome our mm -hmm. fear is not welcome yeah. our, our anger is not welcome and if i am um, holding all of those in place so as not to upset the community around me then my joy might as well not be welcome either because yeah. it's it, you can't hold three down mm -hmm. and not the rest yes and not all of it. <laughs> yeah sorry i'm just trying to share the the live stream <laughs> oh, okay. is, it, is it working it is working yes i'm just going to share it um onto a couple of pages and um into the Learning Love Institute group Great. as well. I forgot yeah. to do that earlier on, so. Okay, right. <laughs> so, um, with the, did you say it's the, the Band of Brothers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Band of Brothers is the group in the UK that we're inspired by. 
and we follow their format for mm -hmm. meetings and use use their um, processes. Um, but the group we have in Spain is called Alpahara Brothers because mm -hmm. we are in the Alpaharas, yeah. and we are beginning to to build our own processes. Um, we're going to create our own initiation weekend. So a band of brothers in the UK they run a weekend called Quest yeah. for Community, which is for volunteer men, men my age or, or adult guys who want to volunteer to join an organization that's based around mentoring and supporting young mm -hmm. men. And then they also run a weekend called Beyond the Hero, which is for young men yeah. who are, um, who've not had a, an easy start in life. Often they've had very little healthy masculine realm, role modeling. Um, and, and they often run those two weekends together. So I went to England and went through my quest of com for community and there were young men on, on that group as well coming through. So mm -hmm. interesting to see, yes, yeah. see two different energies. So our, one of our missions here is to create our own weekend for that, that fits with the nature we live in here, fits with the community and how boys in this area grow up, which is a, quite a different feel from, from most towns, say, in, yes. in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. So how... Are you finding that there's a lot of interest in the work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah lots of interest, and um, started to we've called in help from guys who've been working in with Mankind Project is another uh, mm -hmm. an older organisation that's worked with hundreds of thousands of men yeah. around the world, which is where the Band of Brothers work came from, and the guys that originally bought it from Mankind Project to. A band of brothers are helping us mm -hmm. with with material and and overseeing what we're creating, and um, Richard Olivier is, is one of these guys helping us because he's got a place in Spain nearby. Fantastic! And he just wrote the other day. Um, his son runs an organizer, well, a, a setup that's based around permaculture. Works with um, the Spanish now if I get the word right diaspora the the, the African diaspora in, in Spain mm -hmm. so young people of African um, origins um, are working at this permaculture place and one of them who is interested in coming to meet us he did his month long initiation practice in, in the Gambia when he was oh, young wow. okay. and he's in touch with a woman who wants to see if we can support them or help out. They want to bring rites of passage to mm -hmm. the African communities in Spain. And obviously they've got um, a wealth of, of knowledge and of much course. more connection to, to the rites of passage they yeah. would have had in their communities than we have. Um, and we, we're trying to create it for ourselves. So I think some interesting conversations have come there. Oh, definitely. And it really interests me because I, I really believe that that is, was my birthright. I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. And I want to put that back in place. I want it to be um, available for any young person, girls or boys, to choose to, have, to be taken consci by conscious elders yes. and supported in that very important shift where we need to learn to take responsibility. And is there sort of like a certain age for that, or is it...? Well, no, I made the mistake terribly years ago <laughs> where uh, I'd read lots about rites of passage and, and in villages in, say, in Africa or in villages in, in North and South America, traditionally mm -hmm. the, the boys would have been 14, 15, some of them mm -hmm. would be ready. And I took my boy Leon to Africa when he was 14 to do a, a long trip round across deserts through oh, wow. nearly all in nature, round uh, Zambia, Botswana mm -hmm. and Namibia. And I, I, I kind of had in my mind to take him out and, and to talk about this yes. subject and maybe yeah. see if he wanted to step up and take more responsibility for the camp and whatever. And I was so far off. So far, <laughs> because of course he'd grown up in he grew up in Spain and mm -hmm. some and and in Europe, and he he wasn't he, you know I said to him you don't really you're not really for this are you, to to step up are you leaning he said no not at all that <laughs> so we just made it a yeah. holiday 
Mm -hmm. And I see it in, in kids born, brought up in the first world, mostly they're well into their 20s, well into their 20s, okay. before they would, before this would interest them all, before they would be ready. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think in more traditional or simpler um, lifestyles, like I've seen kids in, in Egypt who herding goats and they're like seven or eight mm -hmm. and they're fully competent yes, you know yeah. it's part of their work and it's different and it's cultures part of their life. Isn't it? yeah so you could say well that's child labor but on mm -hmm. the other hand they looked very very comfortable mm -hmm. just doing what they were doing yeah. and it was part of day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. fetching water wood and so it depends on how we grow up i think we're obviously massively protected in the first world um and much more uh much more input is put into a really high level of technical education mm -hmm. and less ability to just be oneself yes to yes, fend for oneself yeah. so maybe that makes a difference i'm sure yeah. i'm sure so you're finding this this crossover between this work with the the band of brothers and learning love so yeah. that must be quite interesting to see your two loves as it were mm -hmm. really beginning to yeah, to it support is. support and mm. develop and grow. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. And well, it's, no, it's not interesting. It's exciting. <laughs> Even better. And, and I feel, um, <laughs> and as I start to look at it and um, start putting down on paper what I'm, what I'm looking at and bouncing it off these guys, that, yeah, it's mm. very exciting because I, um, yeah, start to see, I, f I feel my creativity coming through. Mm -hmm. I'm actually beginning to write my write my own ideas here and uh, mm -hmm. work out experiences, um, uh, experiential exercises and guided meditations we could work with and, and bring to to the men's work, mm -hmm. which is it's, great. It's wonderful. Yeah. 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 And with learning love, you're running your retreat next May, aren't you? That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a. I'm going to run learning love one, which is a five day retreat with Manjula, who um, I've led with before. Um, we're running 31st of May to 4th of June um, at House of Light. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Um, what, what happens <laughs> in like Learning Love One? What, if I'm, people... I'm not allowed to tell anybody. Are you not? I'm You'd have to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, um, it's a look at the basics of the model, the learning mm -hmm. love model, um, a lot of what we've talked about here, that we all carry trauma from our childhoods, mm -hmm. and how that works and how we build protection around that. And then we'll work with, with people to start to recognise what their personal protection okay. strategies are. Mm -hmm. And then we'll invite them with support to step far out of the protection and see what the feelings are mm -hmm. beneath the protection. What motivates them to go into their protection mechanisms yeah. what are the feelings like and, and sometimes we can look at where those come from if that pops up um, it i would say compared to some of the other retreats it's very much um, the beginnings of witnessing and understanding your relationship mm -hmm. to yourself okay and would people come on their own or as a couple or either way either, either way, way. It's, be it's beautiful to work with a partner um, and then in other ways it can be it can be great for a relationship when a, when a couple come because mm -hmm. the supported the supportive nature of the retreat allows people to share very deeply mm -hmm. and the longer you stay you know to do five days without going back into the need for protection, yes. going back to work, going back to the struggles, yeah. to stay in a, in a retreat centre where you're taking care of and mm -hmm. you can really explore the work. Um, we generally, people, by the end of the week, they're sharing much, a much deeper, more mm -hmm. honest part of themselves. Yes. Now, when you hear your partner sharing their, their truth and vice versa, this really opens a space for a deeper intimacy and deeper mm -hmm. understanding, which is, can only be good. Yes. So it's beautiful to do with a, with a partner. On the other hand, coming alone, um, some people find that they are slightly inhibited when mm -hmm. there's other people around that they 
will see again or that are part of their community or mm-hmm. that they live with. So yeah. some, you know, it can be that if you really need to do some deep work yourself, it can be quite nice to be have the anonymity of Yes, yeah. You know, you won't think yeah. either way. It's all good. It's all good, yes. It sounds really wonderful. So that's five days and you're running it with Manjula? With Manjula, yeah. Yeah. So I've just been talking to her this morning mm-hmm. on, online and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting that together. Yes, so those details will be up on the website soon ish. Yeah. As soon as I've written it up. As soon as we've <laughs> you've yeah. written it up. That's great. Yeah. Um is there anything else that you'd like to share that um, comes to mind? I think I've been to Italy since we last spoke online, haven't we? I think, yes, twice once, actually. Yeah, I've been once yeah. when we last spoke. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to do the Learning Love Skills training, which is for those of us that teach this model and work with people and are interested in deepening into it and learning more and more from Christian Amana. Mm-hmm. Um, it was in a different retreat centre in North Italy, um, the Mandali Project, which is a beautiful place. And that was great. I really enjoyed that. There's a real power to being surrounded by people that mm-hmm. live and breathe this work. Yes, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and that brought me back, inspired to, mm-hmm. to bring more work. And you did an interview with Krishnamana, didn't you? Yeah, I did that the first time round when I was at um, Iasto. Mm-hmm. So we put that out. If that's, yeah. I think that's on our YouTube channel, isn't it? It is indeed. Great. It is indeed. Great. Yeah, it's really, it's really fascinating to hear them talk because they're so open and grounded, but yet yeah. so present. Yeah. Fully present. That's really what I noticed just yeah. from from watching the, the yeah. interview. I mean. Yeah. It's just a treat when I get to spend time yeah. around and the the yeah the energy is is, is wonderful. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think that's that'll do us for today. That'll do us for today. It, I, I did. <laughs> I forgot to ask if anyone's got any questions. If anybody's got something they want to look yeah. at, um, please do write in. Yeah, you can um, post in the comments, and we'll catch up with you if um, you haven't watched or made it live. Just going to say hello to Nina, who's watching. Thank you for joining, Nina. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, Adrian, for sharing more about learning love thank and the band of brothers. Supporting me to get out here. <laughs> We're back in the flow after the summer. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye.